Hello again. Uh, so we're going to get, go ahead with some automated model selection on that body fat data. Just before we do, I'd just like to mention that this k is the number of parameters um, that were fitted in the model. Um, I think it's two here where, where it's the intercept only because there's um, the intercept and the error term estimated. OK. So some automated model selection. We need another library for this, one called MASS. Library M-A-S-S, -S, capitals. And we'll do automated model selection one. There's another there's a part two of this coming. OK, the first thing we need to do um, Make sure that we've got this intercept only model. We do. We've got that M0. And we'll say we'll call the output of this S1. We're going to use a function called step AIC. And this does model selection, stepwise model selection based on AIC. Stepwise means it adds or takes away one variable at a time. That's the stepping that's going on. We're going to put in the full model. M1 was with all of the variables. I'll just show you up here. This is M1, where we defined it there. So we're starting the stepwise selection with a model with all variables. So in that case, we put direction equals backwards, which means it starts at the full model and it works back from that by removing one variable at a time. And we'll put AICC equals true, just to be sure that it's working on the, the um, AICC. We'll run that. Back, and it says error in match.arg direction. Arg should be one of both backward or forward. I wrote backwards. There should not be an S there. Oh, and lots and lots of stuff just came out in R. <clears throat> Here we go. So it says starting AIC 749 in that model. Now what it's doing here is it's telling us what happens if it removes knee, what happens if it removes chest. So it's removing each of these one, from, it has removed each of the variables from the full model and looked to see which has caused the largest change in AIC. Oh, sorry, the smallest. It's finding the one that's called, causes the smallest change in AIC. So this is an AIC-based criteria for selecting the variable to remove. Before we did it on p-value, now it's doing it on AIC and it's doing it for us. So it's exactly the same process as you just saw. Uh, stepwise backwards uh, removal of variables backwards because it goes from the full model um, to reduced models. Um, uh, and it's done on AIC. So here's the next step: is checking each of the each of the variables to remove. Looking at the change in AIC. There's also sum of squares and the residual. Here's the next model. It's checking each of those. So you'll see. Uh, just be clear about this. So this is the model it's looking at at the moment in this table. It contains height. This one, the next model, does not contain height because height is the variable that it found caused the greatest change in AIC. So, um, so that's how it works. It just keeps going and going and going until um, there's not much change in AIC caused by, uh, sorry, there's a, big, there's a big change in AIC caused by removing any of these variables. Um, so, that's, that's what it does. Actually, I paused just there because I was just thinking about what stopping criteria is for this, for this. And actually, it's that it's when, it's when removing, when one can't remove a variable, without making model the the model worse with respect to AIC. So every removal up up to this stage, every removal of a variable has caused the AIC to get better. 
And then at this stage here with this model, it's figured out that removing any single variable uh, will always cause uh, um, the model to get worse in terms of AIC. So that's the stopping criteria here. Good. Um, let's make um, a few more uh, automatic selections of the model. We'll do S2 and in this case we'll start with the intercept only model and go forward. Now when we do that we have to tell it how far it can go forward and we do that with this scope argument and we say where it should start. It knows that Oh, sorry, the lower the lower complexity of the model and then the upper, which we'll give it as M1. That's the full model. Let's run that. There's the output. I'm not going to go through that in detail again. What I want to do is just now do the other one we can do, which is exactly the same, but both directions at once. So it's looking to add and so in each step of changing the model, it looks to see whether it's, it looks to see what the effect of adding and subtracting variables is. We can run that one, and now we'll do what we did before. We'll make these into a list, and so that we can easily compare them, and we'll see how stable the results of these different selection methods are. One would hope they give exactly the same results. So we've made a list of those models. That's this line. And now we use AIC tab, that's AIC table of those models to give us a summary of them. <coughs> and it's given us a warning and that's because they're all the same. They've got the same number of parameters, exactly the same AIC. That's because they are actually the same model. So in this case, the result, the, the resulting model, the best model that we find is the same for all of them. And so these methods are robust. We can be more certain that we found the best model um, than if we'd have only used one of the methods, for example. That's not always the case. Sometimes you get a different best model by different methods. That becomes especially likely when there's a lot of correlation between explanatory variables. Okay, so that's, um, that's one of the automated uh, model selection procedures, step AIC. In the next video, we'll look at uh, another one that um, does that and also can do some model averaging. Thank you.